everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kirsty, and in today's video I'm going to be going through a really easy method for how you guys can draw realistic water drops step by step. Okay so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm using a really light grade pencil so I'm using a H pencil and I'm just using this to mark out the basic shapes of the water drops so I'm giving some variety amongst them as well and it doesn't matter too much about the shapes that you're doing because water drops come in all different shapes. So I decided that the light source was going to be coming up from the bottom and so the next thing that I'm going to do is draw in where the highlights go and the highlights go on the side where the light source is coming from. On some of the water drops I'm also adding two highlights to add a bit of variety as well because if you do all the highlights the same then it will look too uniformed. So the next thing that I'm doing is I'm adding the shadows and the shadows will be on the side where the light source is so surrounding that highlight that you drew and also it will cast a shadow on the far side of the water drops so the opposite side to where the light source is. So I'm just going throughout all the water drops and I'm just adding very lightly the shadowed areas. And it doesn't matter that it's looking sketchy at the moment because we are going to go and blend it out to make it all soft. So I'm making sure that I don't get pencil on the highlights because I want to keep that clear so I can get a really bright highlight on that area. And for this again I'm just using the H pencil and I will go back in and deepen it up a bit and I'll be using a B pencil. So you really just need a couple of pencils here so you need a lighter one and then a darker one where you can deepen up the shadows. So now it's time to blend out all that shading that we just created and to do this I'm using a cotton bud but you can use lots of things so you can use stumps or tissue paper or also your fingers but I do recommend using a cotton bud just because it's quite small and when you're drawing these water drops it is likely that the water drops that you're drawing will be small as well. So I'm using very light pressure and I'm using circular motions as well. And as I get towards the far side where we haven't added much shade in, I just lighten up the pressure so that we don't get too much pencil on those areas because those will be our highlighted areas. So make sure that you create this transition when you're doing your pencil marks. So there's a lot more of the shadow directly around the highlights and then the shadow decreases as you get towards the further side of the drop. Also, when you're using the cotton bud, it can get quite dirty, and if you use it when it's dirty, then it will deposit a lot of pencil onto the paper, which might make it muddy and smudge. So if it does get too dirty, then make sure that you use a new one. Okay, so once I've blended all that out, I'm going back in with the pencil and just darkening up some of the shadows. So particularly the shadows around that highlighted region and the shadow directly at the far side of the water drop. So this will just add more dimension because you'll have more depth because there'll be the difference between the really dark shadows and then there'll be lighter shadows. So you want those darker shadows and then those mid-tone areas just to add some depth. So when I did this, I didn't use any reference photo, but if you want to use reference photos, then you can. But as long as you know the basic principles of how the water drops, shadows and highlights work, then you should be able to draw them without reference photos and get them pretty realistic. Also, when I was drawing this, I did them a lot bigger than they usually would be. So water drops are quite small, so I did them bigger so it's easier to see what I'm doing on camera. But when you draw them smaller, then they'll look really realistic as well. So I'm just going throughout all the water drops and I'm adding the darker shadows. And it doesn't really matter what pencils you use for this. So you can use any pencils. I'll just have two different grades. So a lighter one and a darker grade so you can get the darker shadows. And I'm using a white coloured pencil to do the highlights. But it doesn't matter what you use. You can use a white charcoal pencil or a white pastel pencil. I was just using a coloured pencil because that's what I had on me at the time. But you should be able to get these kind of results with a large range of different materials. And when I'm adding the shadows, I try to use circular motions to make the shading as smooth as possible. So now I'm going in with an eraser and I'm using that to clean up the edges. So when you blend with that cotton wool, it can make some of the edges fuzzy and blend out some of the pencil too much. So you can go around it with an eraser just to clean up some of those edges and make it a lot crisper. And to wipe away the little bits of a razor, I just used a brush, but if you use your hands, then it could smudge some of the pencil a bit. So that's why I recommend using a brush. So now I'm going back in with the pencil again and adding even more shadows and I will continue to blend them out. So I'm just adding the depth and building up the coverage and the depth that I want before I go in and add the highlights. Because when I add the highlights I'm using coloured pencil and it doesn't mix too well with graphite. So I want to make sure that when I add the highlights that, that is the last thing that I'm going to be doing. But if you're using a white charcoal pencil or a pastel pencil then obviously that works different. But I do recommend getting your shadows down first before you add in your highlights. 
So as you can see now, I'm using the stump to blend out some of the darker shadows because the stump I was using had a lot of charcoal and pencil already on it. So I could use that a little bit in some of the really dark areas just to get a bit more of the pencil come off and just to deepen it up a bit. And this again adds a lot of depth because you'll have a large contrast between those shadowed regions and the highlighted regions that we'll do later. in with the white caran d'ache colour pencil and it is important that before I added this white colour pencil that I made sure there wasn't graphite on the areas that I wanted to add the pencil. So I just used a bit of blue tack to pull off the pencil that got smudged around onto those highlighted areas when I was blending with the cotton wool bud. So the parts of the water drop that are highlighted are firstly at the light source it was that little highlight that we drew out at the start and marked out with the shadow around it so that will be the really bright highlight. And when you have that bright highlight, it illuminates some of the light through the drop. So the side opposite the highlighted area is also illuminated as well. So you can add some highlight there as well. So I'm just going throughout all the drops and I'm colouring in those highlights that we drew earlier and marked out with the shadow around them. And also on the opposite side of the water drop, that area will be highlighted as well. So another place where I'm adding the highlights is the area on the opposite side of where the light source is, so the shadow that was cast. And I'm adding this highlight in the middle of the shadowed area because of the illuminated light that will go through from the back of the water drop. So as you can see, when you add the highlight, it really makes the water drop pop out and add a lot of realism to it. And so when you're drawing the water drop small, this really translates to make them look realistic. If you're drawing bigger water drops, then there'll be a lot more detail in them than I'm drawing here. But this technique works really well if you're drawing more real size water drops rather than magnified water drops. So I'm just going to continue going through the water drops and adding in these highlighted areas. So once I've added in all those highlights, I'm going back in with the darker pencil. And now that I've got the highlights in, it's easier to judge what the contrast should be and where I need to add more of the shadows. So I'm just going to quickly deepen up some of the shadows on each of the water drops just to make them pop a bit more. So the last thing that I'm doing is completely optional. I'm just going in with the white gel pen and I'm adding this to little parts of the highlights just to make them pop a bit more and make them a little bit brighter. guys that's it for today's tutorial if you're new to my channel and you really enjoyed this video and found it useful make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future tutorials thank you guys so much for watching as always i'll leave links to my social media sites in the description below thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye